Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title of the video, we are going over this pistol right here from Kimber. So this is a new offering. As of when I'm actually recording this video, this is actually not even known to the public and we're releasing it uh, when they actually release the pistol to the public. So this is the R7 Mako. Basically, what is it, right? So it is an optics ready, um, subcompact, double stack, nine millimeter. So kind of competing in that same space as like uh, G43X, um, the SIG P365, the Shield Plus, uh, and many others out there on the market. So uh, it's got a lot of features going for it though. This one here did come with the optic itself. They make it both optics ready and then ship with an optic, which is what the one that we have here. And it's got some unique stuff going on to it. Uh, stuff that I definitely haven't seen on other firearms. So I suppose with that, let's get up close and personal and kind of look at the details of it, compare it to a couple different offerings out there on the market. And then at the end, we'll sort of wrap it up with how it's performed and then what I think of it overall. Before getting into the details, I suppose we will make sure the pistol is clear. We have our ambidextrous magazine release here. Just gonna press that and our magazine will come out. Verify there's no round in that chamber. There is not, there is no magazine. We are clear. Uh, so as you can see here, it comes with two magazines, a 13 round magazine, as well as an 11 round magazine. The only difference of course, being that extended base plate that we have here on this one. So really uh, in terms of the actual grip you get, again guys, for those of you who are new here, I have large hands, larger than most. And basically you get a two finger grip there with the small one, but of course, obviously it's more concealable. And then with the full one, I get about a half a pinky grip on there, but it does give you a little bit more leverage on the pistol for sure. Obviously it's a little bit larger size though. So pros and cons, you just have to figure out which is best for you. Um, speaking of grip itself, grip angle is definitely a natural uh, shooting grip angle, kind of like a 1911 or an M&P or something like that. Um, generally speaking, if you pick it up and orient yourself at the target, you will be on, unlike a Glock for a lot of people, just as an example. That's definitely important for folks who are newer to red dots. It's a little bit easier to acquire the dot consistently with that type of a grip. Uh, speaking of the grip itself, texturing is great. Um, for a concealed carry gun, it is fantastic. It's a little bit more aggressive here in the front and the back, and then the sides have good texturing to it, but not so much that it's abrasive. Um, I personally tend to like very aggressive grips. Uh, this one is almost where I would like it, but again, considering the other options out there on the market, it's good. I definitely do like it. Has this little swell here in the back. I handed this to one other shooter um, and he thought it felt a little bit odd in his hand, but to me, it feels good in my hand. It just gives me a little bit more extra room to fill in there with my support hand. Um, so I suppose that's just kind of a user preference kind of thing. Um, but the strap, it's all, as you can see, laser done all the way around, all the way up to the front as well, which is nice uh, if you're indexing your thumbs and stuff like that with a thumbs forward grip. Um, again, we'll drop that mag out of there. Our slide lock side release is ambidextrous as well. The pistol's completely ambidextrous. Everything's the same on the front and the left. And continuing to move forward, we do have our takedown lever that we'll talk about here in just a second, the trigger guard, and it is high undercut, which I do like. It allows you to get as high as possible up there on the pistol. Uh, let's talk about that ambidextrous magazine release. It's gonna be one thing that I noticed um, could be an issue. Uh, what's nice about it is that it's recessed, as you guys can see there. Um, so that way, even if you're leaning against the wall, you're not gonna bump it. Uh, that is a concern whenever you have an ambidextrous type of mag release. And the thing I ran into was trying to uh, kind of quickly change mags, if you will, as a right-hand shear here. If you look where my, my finger is, my middle finger here, it's basically right on the other side. And I would go to push it and the mag wouldn't come out. And I couldn't figure out what was going on because I'm gripping the pistol hard. And what was going on is that my knuckle here was interfering with it. It's just kind of a training issue that you have to work with. But just know that it, it can be a, a thing and it can happen. So 
there is that. But if you're left-handed, it's probably a good thing. You probably do like that ambidextrous mag release on there. The slide lock slide release lever is minimalistic. And again, it's kind of recessed into the frame. You can see there on the frame how it kind of comes up a little bit. And that is the widest part of the pistol right at one inch. Speaking of that, we'll roll in a spec sheet here so you guys can get an idea of all the different specs that the pistol has. Um, but it's raised up in there. At no point did I ever accidentally actuate it, which I tend to do shooting with that thumbs forward high grip like that. Um, with some pistols, it never happened. I do like it. And it's it's got that texturing on there, which allows you to get leverage to push it up to lock it, as well as release it. So well thought out. Take down lever, we already talked about that. We have this little rail up front. As of right now, I do not know of any lights that work with it. That said, I would imagine in the future, they're probably going to change that and offer something that works with it. Um, but right now, again, as the filming this video, I'm not sure of anything, but it's probably coming down the road as well. And just double check that we are clear. Speaking of the trigger, the trigger is aluminum. Uh, it has that sort of flat shoe to it and it has our little safety here. So if you don't pull that, there's no way the gun will fire. But in terms of the actual trigger itself, that aluminum definitely feels good. It feels different than polymer. Uh, it's just got a different type of crispness to it, I suppose. Especially there on the reset. So you definitely hit a wall right ah, I drove through it right there. There's our wall. And then it breaks clean. I mean, it's very, very crisp, right at five pounds on my scale. It was like five to 5.2 pounds, uh, just kind of varying there. And it has that over travel stop built into it that you guys can see there. So it's just, it's a quick trigger to get on, especially for a compact gun like this. Um, speaking of <laughs> trigger, you do have to pull the trigger to take the pistol down. So basically you're just gonna point it in a safe direction, pull the trigger, pull back slightly, pull down on both of these tabs. And now sometimes the tabs are a little hard to get to because of that texturing, but you're just gonna pull down on it. If I can get to them, like I just said, sometimes they're hard to get to because of the texturing. I wasn't kidding. And there we go, we just pop out like that. If my nails are a little bit longer, that might be a little bit easier. Uh, but you can see here we do have our guide rod, which is polymer. The barrel itself, which is nitrided, as is the slide. Both are made from stainless steel and then nitrided on top of that. One thing you'll note that's a little bit weird about the barrel, or different, I guess you could say, is sort of this locking block here. And what that does is it allows to bring the bore down uh, even closer to your hand, which is nice. Anybody who shot a lot knows that. Um, so the recoil, the felt recoil is more in line with your hand than it would be with a traditional style barrel hood. So uh, that is kind of a cool little feature that they thought about. And you can see it's actually cut out there in the slide to accommodate for that. Additionally, it looks like our breech is pinned in there. I'm not sure why that is, but it definitely looks like that. I'm not sure if it's for caliber changes or things like that, but you can see that little chunk right there is pinned in place right there. And that all cor corresponds or aligns rather up with this chunk there on the top of the barrel. Looking in there, you can see good machining, no chatter marks, nothing like that. In terms of fitment, you really can't complain about that. And then reassembly is essentially the exact same thing, but in reverse order. So we'll put our spring in there, press down, and then we're just gonna align the actual metal tabs there with the cutouts there in the slide right there. And once that is in there, we're just gonna pull back on the slide. Like so. We talked a little bit about the slides makeup already, the nitrided finish, but we do have forward serrations for folks who like to do press checks and things like that, as well as rear. They're not overly aggressive. They're perfectly functional. Uh, really have no issues with them at all. Sights on the pistol that come with it are True Glow uh, factory night sights. So we have that orange ring up front uh, with the tritium in there, and then our white rings in the back with the U-notch sight. And then of course the Crimson Trace uh, red dot there, it's also cut for the Shield RMS. If you guys want to use those, it has the same cut. And one thing that's nice about the little Crimson Trace sight is that it co-witnesses with standard height sights typically. Um, and that is the case with the Kimber as well. It's cut nice and low, so that way you can co-witness your iron sights if you wanna do that. Or of course you can just use the dot independently, which I would recommend if that's what you're going to do. Um, but great sights uh, just from the factory, a nice ledge on there if you wanna do one-handed manipulations the same is true, of course, if you want to use the Crimson Trace Optic for that. It's got a 3 MOA dot. It's auto-dimming, uh, which some folks like, some folks don't like. 
I'll leave that up to you guys below in the comment section. Um, and then it also has an auto on, auto off as well to preserve battery life. So the actual battery life, I believe, is like 500 to 700 hours. But again, it turns auto on, auto off. So it really lasts, you know, definitely more than a year unless you're just carrying it constantly, which might cut that time down a little bit. Um, but that is the optic that they do offer from the factory. Now we're going to see if it forks when it's topped off. So we have a full mag here. We'll load that one up. Send it home. Then top the magazine off and see how it does. Some guns just don't like that extra tension there from the mag. We'll see. Seems to handled it just fine. Since this gun is brand new at the time of actual review, I'm just gonna compare it size-wise to guns that you may have seen because obviously you haven't seen this yet because it's not in the stores. So uh, here we have our Shield Plus, which is a 10 plus one configuration currently. Of course, it has a longer mag as well. And this is our Kimber, of course, with the short mag. You guys can kind of get an idea in terms of size. They're pretty darn close all the way around. Line the slides up there pretty close and then if we had the performance center which of course is the same size outside of having that four inch barrel on there you can see it's just a little bit longer but similar again all the way around in terms of size and then probably the king of the category currently is the uh, p365 of course it definitely had some growing pains as documented on my channel um, but it's a little bit shorter there as you guys can see even with the slides back to back and it looks like it's also a little bit thinner um, than the Kimber itself, but lengthwise, uh, that is the smallest mag that it comes with, and it's a little bit longer there than the Kimber is in that configuration. And then we have our Torx uh, GX4, and you guys can take a look there. Again, it's a little bit shorter in the barrel length, but in terms of the actual grip, it's basically identical. Same is true in terms of the height. At this point in the video, we've gone over most of the details of the pistol. There's a few other things though that I want to talk about before we close it out. Number one, full disclosure, Kimber did send this out to me. Obviously, there's no other way I would have the pistol for the review at the time of the release. And I've actually had the pistol in for a couple months, so good on Kimber for actually getting it out and letting me put enough rounds through it that I can give you an informed opinion. Um, so to that end, let's talk about reliability. Right now, the gun's got just over 800 rounds through it, mostly Minuteman Munitions, who is a sponsor here on the channel, which I do appreciate, but we've mixed in steel case um, as well as hollow points. And out of those 800, we had one malfunction. It was in the first magazine when I was actually zeroing the optic and I think I took a picture of it but regardless one malfunction first mag after that zero malfunctions of any kind the gun was cleaned and lubricated prior to going out on the range so in terms of that it's done well accuracy has been phenomenal uh, lately if you guys probably watched the intro you probably noticed that I've been kind of pushed to a certain part of my farm because the crops are really high so I can't shoot long distance longest I can get out there is about 175 and I have two different targets 175 and 140 that I put out there in terms of yards I was able to relatively consistently with this little gun in that 3 MOA dot hit that uh, target at 140 yards so in terms of accuracy I mean it's doing pretty good it's better than most people will ever need out of a pistol that is for sure um, just what do I think of it overall it does shoot well for a gun of this size with this weight it's a softer shooting gun. Um, I do think that barrel design does have something to do with it. And obviously the trigger is, is very good as we already talked about as well, which is becoming more and more of the standard. You know, a few years ago to find striker fire guns that had good triggers was a rarity. Uh, nowadays, the companies are kind of uh, catching up and that seems to be more and more, you know, normal, if you will. Uh, in terms of cost on these guns, if you want it with the optics shipped, I believe the MSRP is $799. And if you want it just with the plate on there and no optics, and you want to you know be able to put it on later however you want the msrp is 599 dollars. i do not know what they're going to be on the street uh that said it's august of 2021 as of when i'm filming this and the gun market is insane so who knows but if i can find a link to them i will put a link down below in the video description if you guys want to pick it up and the last thing i want to talk about that i think is kind of a cool feature that i didn't touch on yet but i'm sure many of you guys have already noticed is going to be the ejection port design so it is a closed top design and it's certainly not the first pistol to do this and it certainly won't be the last but a couple benefits that it has for sure on this particular gun being an optics ready gun is that you get less oil dirt gunk on your lens now if you guys have shot any like 
you know, optics ready guns with optics on there, you'll know that's a very real thing and it definitely happens. And with this gun, it doesn't happen. So that is a direct byproduct there of the open top design. And then additionally, I suppose in really harsh conditions, there's less points of dirt getting in there. Um, I don't really know that that's a real benefit or not. And then of course the potential con of it is problems ejecting, right? Cause it's just got less of an area to eject out of than a traditional pistol would, right? So uh, there is that, but again, outside of that one malfunction in the first mag, the gun has ran flawlessly uh, to date. But of course, that's only a sample size of one. Do your own research, look around, see what other folks are doing if you're looking into getting a gun. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's a winner. Um, in the past, if you guys have watched the channel, I've badmouthed Kimber because I had bad experience with them and their quality control. Um, but this one has had uh, none of, no issues at all like that and uh, this gun is built in their new facility and from what i've been reading on the internet it seems like they've improved since their old facility um which makes sense if you're building a new facility and getting new equipment and stuff like that hopefully you're improving right that's the goal um so there is that and i think with that we'll close the video out if you like the type of video and you're not subscribed uh, definitely hit the subscribe button if you are subscribed you're not seeing at least two to four videos a week here on the channel make sure you hit the notification bell if you've done that uh, and you're still not doing it, you can sign up from an email list here on your screen at this website. Uh, that email list is just all of the videos since the last email went out. Um, so that way there's no social media giant censoring your eyes from my content. If this thing uh, goes on sale or anything like that, we'll put that out in our daily deals email, as the name implies, it's daily deals. Um, so it goes out basically daily, and it's six or seven of the best deals that I find around the firearms and outdoor space, uh, so that way you guys can save some money. And then I think that is it. If you guys aren't following me on my various social media, you can go ahead and do so at the sites here on your screen. And with that, we'll close it out. Thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.